everybody, welcome to Amy Liu Presents. My next guest is a charming actor whose work has been in nearly 20 film festivals. Please welcome George Kui Nguyen. Thank you, Amy. I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. So let's get started by telling us why you became an actor and your journey in, in, this, in this process. Well, I became an actor because I fell in love with the movies. Uh, as a kid growing up, I would go watch movies in the theater and um, always saw myself uh, doing that type of work. So I did plays in elementary school and in, in the high school I studied a little bit of acting. Um, and then I went on to study at the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco. Uh, from there I did a lot of theater and independent films up in San Francisco and moved down to LA <coughs> a little over a year ago. Oh wow, how's that been? How's been, the move? Uh, it's been a great experience, you know, lots of ups and downs, but uh, it's all about the journey and having fun and doing the best I can. I got a chance to work with uh, Emmy Award winning uh, uh, actor Ed Asner in a film and uh, it's been great. Hollywood George is coming for you. <laughs> so was there a defining moment in your life where you're like, okay, that's it, I want to be an actor? Um, there wasn't a defining moment. I think it's always been in my blood ever since I was a kid and I felt that uh, in my life it's something that I enjoy doing um, and telling stories and being creative and uh, making sure that uh, life is depicted truthfully and honestly on camera or on stage mm -hmm. and that's what I really enjoyed about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is always something that I've always had a passion for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For aspiring actors out there and actresses, what are some tips that you might give, like do's and don'ts? Uh, well, I think for aspiring actors, I think the best thing to do is study and enjoy the moment and continue to do the work, you know, do plays, do... Just practice a lot. Ju just practice a lot, go out there and put yourself out there and, and enjoy it, you know, and not let um, anything get in your way if this is what you really want. And do it for the love and not for fame or fortune. Mm -hmm. Any major don'ts? Don't be self-serving, always help your other actor, make sure you play off your other, you help your other actor look good. It's all about the other actor, not about you. You're so selfish, George. No, I think that's how it's supposed to be. Right. So speaking of films, you actually have a new one out called Box of Hearts. We're really excited about seeing it. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, it's a short film directed by Asako Ushio. It's about a single father who is trying to uh, raise a 12-year-old girl, but at the same time, he's, uh, he's uh, in love with this co-worker of his and yeah. not understanding what to do with that and his little 12-year-old daughter gives him some dating advice. So yeah, that's exactly who you should go to for dating advice. Exactly. So we actually have a few clips that we want to show you all. It's pretty funny, so be prepared. Let's roll the first one. Go like that. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Just don't be creepy, okay? What? Bye. Have fun in school. Am I creepy? You're like, wait a minute, am I creepy? <laughs> yep. So have you ever been called creepy in real life though? No, not at all. <laughs> Do you resonate with the character in the film? Uh, not exactly because I'm not a single father and uh, I don't have kids. So uh, definitely, uh, it was definitely a different uh, role for me to play. I mean, I do play fathers quite a bit, but uh, I've never had that type of experience before. Do you think she gives good advice? Do I think she gives good yeah. advice? Uh, I think uh, the character gives good advice, sure. So since your character has a crush on the coworker, have you have ever had a similar scenario in real life where you've had a pickup fail? Um, of course, yeah, definitely. What's your worst pickup fail? My worst pickup fail? Uh, I think just going out there and asking someone for their number and they're not giving it to you, then I think that's that's the worst I've ever had. <laughs> oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your favorite pickup line, though? My favorite pickup line? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a pickup line, remember? If you have any favorite pickup lines, be sure to share it with George. He might, <laughs> he might actually use it. 
I remember I was at a concert and I was eating a banana and mm -hmm. someone came up to me and was like, hey, are you eating a banana? <laughs> I think that was their pickup line. That was their pickup line? Yeah. So maybe you could use that. I'm just kidding, don't use that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is that a banana you're eating? <laughs> Why, yes it is. <laughs> I'm feeling it off. <laughs> so we actually have a second clip that we want to take a look. Let's roll it. Hi, Lindsay. She farted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't you just love farting in romantic situations? Can't go wrong with fart jokes. Exactly. <laughs> so have you ever farted in front of your crush in real life? I don't believe I have. What would you do if that happened? Well, it's a natural occurrence and I would say I'm sorry and uh, I apologize. I had a big burrito for lunch. <laughs> yeah, and just run away and pretend that never happens, and or or run away and uh, say it never happened. <laughs> Would you see her again? Uh, of course, why not? Why not, right? It's a natural <laughs> occurrence. Exactly. What if your crush <clears throat> parted in front of you, like how she did in the movie, or how she did in the film? If she was my crush, I would ap appreciate it and not that say she was anything. herself in front of you. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> You know, speaking of fart jokes, I actually made a fart poem in high school. You did? I actually wrote a fart poem in really? high school. Really? Yeah. Can I hear it? Well, actually, I, I need to go and find it. But, oh. but it like, but I, you know, I made it so that the fart parts were in big, bold letters, and then everything else was small. Very it cool. It was like farting in an elevator. It was a poem, poem about farting in the elevator. Wow, that's yeah. very cool. I should share it with you next time. Yeah. Don't share the fart with me, but the poem, yeah. Yeah, no, I'll, uh, I, I think I'll do both. You know, it's one big package. So, oh, it yeah. comes in, okay. Yeah, it comes in together, an elevator. So. Yeah, too. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. It's the best place to fart. It is. Yeah, yeah, it's nice and insulated. I think the best place to fart is on an airplane because it's noisy and no one knows you're farting. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Didn't you fart in a plane before? Tell us about it. Uh, I'm sure I have. Yes, you have. Remember <laughs> last time you said you farted in a plane? Uh, I think so, yeah. yeah. But no one knows because the engine is so loud and you're just walking by. So. You're like, oh, no one heard it, so it doesn't Oops, count. sorry. It doesn't count, so whatever. It doesn't count. Hopefully it's, I'm not standing while that happens and the passenger sitting there. <laughs> so, speaking of embarrassing moments, what was the most embarrassing moment you've ever had yeah, well, B. B. Arthur, um, I used to, I, I worked at the theater company and she was there to perform a special show. And I was in the green room with her after the, the show and everybody's having fun and talking and drinking. And she turns to me and she says, uh, is this my drink? And I, not knowing for sure that was her drink, but just kind of awestruck in B. Arthur talking to me, I said, Yes. Well, yes, it is. Exactly. <laughs> and so she picks it up, and me not knowing, she takes a zip out of it, and she just. <laughs> this is not my drink! <laughs> and I was so embarrassed. I mean, I was just like, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Do you think if B. Arthur was still alive, she would remember you? Well, unfortunately, B. Arthur passed away, I think, last year or something like that. So, uh, yeah, so she won't remember me, but. Uh, I'm sure they experience. She'll, she'll take that experience to the grave with her. She'll take that experience with the grave with her. So. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of crushes and actresses, have you ever had any crushes on the set while you were an actor? No, usually uh, as an actor, I try to be professional and uh, treat everyone as an equal, you know, actor or crew or director or whoever. So um, I try to keep the set professional. Mm. Outside the set, that could be a different story, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all know you're a player. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that, you don't even need pickup lines. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, just, you just look at them and then they just block to you. Yeah, I give them the stare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The women Zoolander just, look. Exactly, and women just block to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's your signature look, right? That's my signature look. <laughs> <laughs> so I see that you're rocking your Star Wars shirt. Yeah, one of my favorite yes, films. Chinese characters. The Empire Strikes Back. Is that in Chinese? That is in Chinese. Oh, 
That is in Chinese, Japanese, Korean, I'm not sure. <laughs> Thanks for rocking that in our show. Of course. I know that you're course. a huge Star Wars fan. I am. Love and Star Wars. Tell us what, how you got into Star Wars and your fanaticism and, well, and why you got interested. Um, yeah, I just loved it as a kid growing up, uh, watching Star Wars in the theater and uh, the characters and uh, the storyline. And, um, and as I was uh, talking to you or talking to someone earlier about that, it's because um, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a story that's about a young boy who's uh, trying to find himself and then finding out that later on that he's, he's part of a bigger picture and how he saves the, the re Republic from the Empire, you know, and being a little farm boy out in Tatooine, um, not knowing what's going to happen with his life, he's brought into this world. So that makes it exciting. Mm -hmm. So, I know you're Vietnamese, right? Yes. How do you say Star Wars in Vietnamese? Let's start with Star and Wars. Star is Sao. Okay. And War is Jin Chang. But usually in Vietnamese, you would you flip the kind of flip words. it around. So, I would say it's Jin Chang Sao. Okay, cool. Jin Chang Sao. How do you say I like Jin Chang Sao? Tôi thích Jin Chang Sao. <laughs> I hope that's right. <laughs> I wasn't born in Vietnam, so I was born here in the U.S. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so I grew up in San Francisco. But you speak fluent Vietnamese? I speak fairly fluently, but I speak with a northern dialect. My family was originally from the north. They went down to the south in 54, and then my brother was born in Saigon, and I was born in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my parents are from Vietnam too. Oh, Even sorry. though we're ethnically Chinese, okay. uh, they were born in Vietnam and they came over here. Wow. Yeah, so pretty, kind of similar background. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's great. I've always wanted to learn Vietnamese, but I never got a chance to. I speak Chinese, but Vietnamese is something that's on my bucket list. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as a kid, I was sent to a Vietnamese school, but I didn't really want to study it, so I didn't really complete it and yeah. stuff. I was sent to Chinese school. Yeah. yeah. So that's why my Vietnamese isn't so great. Like, I can't really read and write that well. But uh, speaking, I can speak because growing up with relatives coming over from Vietnam and stuff, I would speak to them a lot. Mm -hmm. so how do you say hi, how are you in Vietnamese? Uh, chào em. Chào em. Khỏe không? Khỏe không? Yeah, hey, I got it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of your Vietnamese background, how do your parents feel about you pursuing acting? Uh, my parents have always uh, definitely supported my uh, career. I mean, I studied science in college, but I also balanced it with the acting on the side. Mm -hmm. So, it made them happy that I studied science, but I also had to pursue my passion. So. I was very fortunate to be able to study science in college, but also study acting at the American Conservatory Theater uh, over those years. Thank you so much, George, for joining us today. That was such a fun conversation. Please come back anytime. Thanks for having me, Amy. Looking forward for the next time. Thanks for watching Amy Liu Presents. If you want to see a guest come on, leave it in the comments below. Hey everybody, welcome to Amy Liu Presents. We're actually going to play a game with our guest, George Kuyvinuyan, who is a really charming actor, but also a huge fan of Star Wars. So we're going to test his knowledge of Star Wars. Jing Jeng Sao, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's how you say it in Vietnamese. So we've learned. So here's how the game's going to go. I'm going to read you a list of things about Star Wars that may or may not be true. And it's a game called True and False with Star Wars. And you're going to tell me if you think it's true or false. Okay, I'll do my best. Yeah, just what you think. All right, I can do that. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so the first one is the word Ewok is said in every Star Wars movie. True or false? That would be false. Why? Because Ewoks aren't in episode one or two or three or four or five. They only show up in episode six. Wow, George, you got your facts straight. <laughs> but the truth is that the word Ewok itself is never said out loud in any of the Star Wars movies. Yep. That was interesting. Okay. True or false? Ewoks speak Tibetan. Tibetan? Yeah. Is that how it's pronounced? Tibetan? Yeah. Hmm. The language of Tibetan. I think that might be true. 
True? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. Just because it's Asian? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yes. Okay, now, now another Asian related true or false thing that I'm gonna read out is several Ewok lines are actually in the Filipino Tagalog language. True or mm. false? False. It's actually true. It is? Yeah. Oh, wow. There's actually a clip where they speak in Filipino language. Tagalog. Interesting. And um, people say, believe it's Tagalog. I didn't know that. Make it out to be Tagalog. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe they're saying like run or hide or attack. Or eat something. <laughs> yeah, I know. The Ewoks are so cute. They're like little bears. Okay. <laughs> but they can be vicious, huh? They're tough. Yeah, they're tough. Yeah. They're like cute, fluffy little bears, but they're so tough. They're tough. Yeah. Okay, the next one is no physical clone trooper outfits were actually produced for the films. Every clone trooper seen in Star Wars films was created with CGI. True or false? Clone troopers, but that's only in the, uh, the prequels, not the original yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, those are, those are all CGI, I think. Well, no. They had to have some uh, actual costumes for the actors. So for the clones. Oh, for the clones? No, those are all CGI. Yeah, there's yeah. just the physical clone trooper. Yeah, yeah. Was there an actual CGI. outfit? You think? No. So it's false. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. So it's true. It's true that there's no physical outfit for the clones. Yeah. Wow. Wow, George, you know your stuff. It's actually true. Yeah, but in the original Star Wars, the stormtroopers do have. Yeah, there we go. George Lucas will be proud. <laughs> yeah, he can put me in the next Star Wars. No, he's not even directing anymore. So. Oh, okay. You should audition for the next director. I know, right? Yeah. I wish. Who would you want to play? Me? Yeah. Han Solo? No, no. It has to be my own character. There's no... Uh, you can't play someone else's role. Be you know what? Maybe you should play another new character. That's like a new cute, villain. Like a new villain that's a really cute animal. Asian that, villain. Yeah, like that. that's a really cute stuffed animal of some <laughs> really sort and speak animal. Vietnamese. Isn't that brilliant? That would be brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Throw in some Chinese in there too. Sure, <laughs> sure. Okay, the next one is Yoda has no determined species, as in his species has never ever been named. True. Yes, that's actually true. I didn't know that either. You didn't know that? Yeah. If you were to he, guess... And he's over 900 years old. Did you know that? No, I knew. I didn't know that, but I knew he was really old. Over 900 years old. Wow. If you were to guess, what species would you name it? Yoda? Yeah. Hmm. Let me see. What would I name it? No idea. This might... This might help you. Okay. So the next part, true or false? Yoda's face, his figure, was actually based off the likeness of Albert Einstein. True or false? I think that's true, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is true. Yeah. Do you see the similarities? I do see the similarities. Okay. And his wisdom, too. Yeah. So maybe... So maybe his species is like Albert Einstein. Einstein in the mum. Einstonium. He's a Einstonium uh, character. Yeah, maybe he's like a Einstonium species. Einstonium species. <laughs> Why not? Planet Alberto. Okay, true or false? Yoda was actually going to be played by a tiny elephant carrying a cane. Tiny elephant carrying a cane? Yeah, originally. So they changed it. Obviously. I think that's, uh, I think that's false. Wasn't it a monkey? Oh my gosh, you're right! Wow, you do know your stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was a monkey. <laughs> Elephant's kind of big for a Yoda character. It's, it's, um, a, like a baby elephant. Oh, baby so, like, elephant. Like, they're usually, like, this small. Oh, yeah? And then they grow bigger. Oh, okay. But he, he, he was probably gonna be, like, a... Did you know Yoda was originally a puppet? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I did that. Oh, okay. It was... You know who did the voice for uh, Yoda? No. Frank Oz. Oh, that's right. I, uh... Who's the voice for Miss Piggy in The Muppets? Oh my gosh! 
It's Frank Oz? Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. I like the voice for Darth Vader. Oh. Yeah. So can you give us your best Darth Vader impression? My best Darth Vader impression? Sure. I find your lack of faith disturbing. <laughs> okay, my, mine is... Okay, I'm gonna give you mine too. Okay. Luke, I am your father. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you need an inhaler? <laughs> I have an inhaler for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's Luke, what he means! I am your father. Okay, that's better. I love, I love his like, I love his breathing. I love his breathing. I think that's the coolest part. <laughs> the breathing is acting too, right? They don't use an actual machine for it. That, I'm not too sure about that, yeah. That's a good question. Okay, let's yeah. uh, find out. Because but, uh, it's James Earl Jones' voice, David Prowse's body, but the breathing portion might be added on, actually. I, I think I can do the breathing portion. You me. could. I yeah. think you could, too. They, they need yeah. to record you for that. Yeah. Yeah, that was my audition tape. That was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so, bring it back to the next thing I want to read off. True or false? R2D2 derived from the phrase round two decoy two. False. Yes, that is. What do you think it is? I forget. I know it wasn't that. <laughs> okay. What was it? Okay. That means you still got it wrong. Because you don't know. I, I know that it's not right, <laughs> so I got it right. <laughs> half, half. So, <laughs> so it's actually Real 2 Dialogue 2. Real 2 Dialogue 2. George Lucas got the inspiration when he was filming American Graffiti, and one of the editors, the sound editor, Walter Murch, was like, okay, give me Real 2 Dialogue 2. And he was like, R2-D2. And, and he wrote it down, and that was inspiration for the R2-D2 character. Very cool. Yeah. You didn't know that? I didn't know that, yeah. And you're a Star Wars fan? I am. <laughs> yeah, we need to bring your t-shirt. <laughs> Give me your t-shirt. No. <laughs> I've had more questions right than wrong. <laughs> okay, fine. So the last one is this. P. Diddy actually auditioned for the role of Mace Windu. Mace Windu. True. Close, but no cigars. It's actually false. <laughs> but you know who did? It's actually Tupac Shakur auditioned for the oh, role of Mace Windu. Tupac Shakur did. Yeah. It was a little prior to before he passed away, unfortunately. Yeah. But he didn't get the part. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was sent, given to uh, Samuel L. Jackson. So, yeah. Which yeah. was the right choice. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to see Tupac as Mace Windu. Tupac? Mm -hmm. He could have been rapping in Star Wars videos. It's true. Like he'd have rapped the soundtrack or something. That's true. That would have been interesting. So on that ending note, let's bring our game to a close. Thank you so much, George, for joining us today. Thank you for having it me. It was a fun game. It was a pleasure. Let's cheers. Cheers. Cheers to Tupac and... B. Arthur. B. Arthur. May their souls rest in peace. Exactly. So thank you, George, for joining us today for How Well Do You Know Star Wars, True and False? Thank you, Amy, for having me, and that was fun. Thank you, George. High five. Yeah. So thanks for watching Amy Lou Presents. If you want to see more games, leave it in the comments below what kind of games you want to see, and we'll definitely try to make it happen. Thanks so much.